Mark Rogers TV breaking down positional units across the country, stopping in the ACC with the Miami Hurricanes, talking some linebackers with Cam Underwood from State of the U. Cam, it's always a pleasure, man. I mean, it's uh, it's always a good time, man. So we're uh, just going to talk a little Canes football, a little uh, defense right now, and uh, make some uh, make some memories. Yep, love to hear the personnel breakdown and uh, the nuts and bolts, but uh, always get some stories with Cam as well and some some anecdotes. So I expect a lot here. All right, so we got a scheme change. The three fours out the window. Team's going to be more aggressive, and most football fans understand what that means up front on the defensive front in regards to splitting gaps and getting in the into the backfield rather than reading and reacting. But uh, kind of talk about the changes at the linebacking spot. Well, you know, first of all, you're going to have three linebackers versus four, and that's where the nomenclature comes from, the 3-4 or the 4-3. You're talking how many players you have on the defensive line versus the linebacking positions in that front seven box. Um, so we're going to, uh, you know, four down for defensive linemen and then three linebackers. So just on, you know, sheer quantity of players at that position, you're going to have a, a change. Um, you know, this whole entire front seven, this is really going to be the – the, the two units that predict success for our defense, uh, the defensive line and the linebackers. They're mostly going to get upfield. Uh, you know, they're going to – obviously linebackers have to support the run and play some pass coverage. So they're kind of the jack-of-all-trades in the middle of defense. You have to, at that second level, really know or decide quickly, am I going forward or am I going backwards? You know, uh, you know obviously rushing the passer – trying to cut down that running lane or get back into pass coverage, uh, you know, in zone or man. Uh, and there's going to be some zone coverage, you know, last year uh, in the years past, you know, we had defensive ends trying to cover slot receivers uh, in our three, four, and uh, that was unsuccessful. Um, and, you know, sometimes the linebackers have to cover also, uh, and not all of the linebackers are good in coverage, honestly. Um, you know, you have certain guys who are run stoppers, certain guys who can do both, and certain guys who excel in pass coverage. So there's going to be missed coverages and things like that. Like, I mean, it's football. Like, people are going to make mistakes. But, uh, you know, so it's going to be a little bit different that way. Um, there's going to be more blitzing, I think, from the linebackers. We have a couple of guys who are really, really good at that. Uh, so using their skill sets in a positive way uh, to try to, again, wreak havoc. I said this uh, you know, I've written this on the side and said this in another video that we did previously, uh, but the, the defensive coordinator, Manny Diaz, uh, who's a Miami native, uh, he knows that Miami kids want to play fast. That's what we do. Uh, and I've said this when we talked recruiting before, and it's, you know, worth repeating. There's very few teams in America that play big on defense. Uh, that are going to match you on size or be bigger. You know, uh, Florida State, they're recruiting at that level where they have massive size across the defensive front. Uh, Alabama, LSU. Those guys are going to be huge. I mean, if you just look at the defensive line and linebackers, I mean, look at look at Alabama's linebackers, 6'4", 260. I mean, what? Like, that doesn't make sense. I mean, and oh, it makes sense for them, but there's obviously a scarcity of players at that size, at that position, could move like that. And at Miami, we don't have guys who play linebacker at that size. Like, we have kids at defensive line or defensive end, defensive tackle. We have a kid uh, committed in this class who's 6'5", 270-ish. So he's within an inch and 10 pounds of a starting middle linebacker at Alabama. So you look at that as he's playing on the line versus in the linebacking core. We're going to need to play faster because we're not going to over overwhelm you with size. That's not a thing that Miami's ever going to do. We're going to be smaller relatively. I mean, we're talking football players, so, you know, our linebacker is going to be 210 as, a two, as opposed to 240, you know. But we're going to play fast. We're going to get up the field. We're going to wreak havoc. That's what Manny Diaz, Manny Diaz defense wants to do. He's also going to be the linebacking position coach. So that, by him coaching linebackers, that allowed us to have two separate defensive backs coaches, one for corners and one for safeties. Uh, and we'll talk about that later, but he's not just going to say, okay, linebackers go do that. He's in the room with them. He's in the coaching room. He's in the position room. This is his group that we're talking about. So he's going to want his whole defense to play fast as a coordinator, and especially his own position. If you're not playing fast and you're preaching this as a defensive coordinator, what are you doing? You know, so these guys, they're going to play fast. They're going to get up the field. Um, obviously, they have a variety of engagements, as it were, sometimes zone, sometimes man, blitz, coverage, rush, all these different kind of things. But uh, I think that we're going to see a wider skill set 
from our linebackers because they have diverse skill sets. Uh, and I think that you're going to just continue to see a high level of play uh, because linebacking court in Miami has always been known uh, for high quality. So, Cam, if you graze the stat sheet, you see Juwan Young had 57 stops, three tackles for loss, picked off a pass. Jermaine Grace, 79 wrapped up tackles, six tackles for loss, a couple sacks. So those are the stats. But who gets you excited on this linebacking core? Well, both of those guys are going to be integral players. Uh, Young was playing some middle backer last year. Uh, he got injured late in the season, um, and he missed the spring. Uh, so he'll he'll be coming back, and he's fighting for. And I guess I'll just start there at the middle backer uh, position. So he's fighting for his job back because we have uh, a freshman all, uh, who was all American named Shaquille Quarterman, um, and he came in and just was awesome. Uh, if you watch the U.S. Army All American game, he had what seven tackles, two tackles for loss, uh, defended pass, maybe a fumble recovery and a fumble force in the All American game. Uh, he would just look like he was playing faster than these other kids. Uh, he's about 6'1", 235-ish, so he's one of the stockier linebackers, uh, and I thought that he was kind of just a solid run stopper, uh, even from seeing his, his highlight film in high school, but then seeing that game, uh, that All-American game, I was not prepared for that. I didn't think that he was that kind of player, and it definitely uh, carried over because he was an early enrollee, so he got to campus. Uh, so the All-American game was on a Sunday. He was on campus the next Tuesday, like two days later, and then in classes and then participated in the spring ball. Uh, and he was just a missile all over the field all through the spring. Uh, he was, you know, calling the defense as the defensive captain, uh, the middle linebacker position um, and everything. He was the most improved player. Uh, I think he won that award, the newcomer award for the spring. Um, the kid is the truth. Uh, and I, I, you know, Juwan Young is going to play some snaps this year. He's going to play a lot of snaps. And he's going to be an integral part of this defense. But I really see Shaq Quarterman as being the starter from day one uh, out there. He's he's a special talent. It really is. So uh, he's a guy who definitely gets me um, excited. If you go, uh, I you know, State of the U, obviously, the website. If you go search up, I wrote a couple pieces about Shaq Quarterman when he was a recruit. Uh, and then we had the little capsule on National Signing Day. He, I embedded this video from Twitter. He had this hit where the quarterback is running around and stops because he's looking for a receiver. And so he kind of stops to throw the ball. And you see Quarterman knife in like this. And the kid went flying literally like eight yards on the play. And he got, you know, Quarterman gets up and he's all pulled his jersey like, yeah, like Hulk smash. And his kid is just there. The kid was fine. The kid tweeted about it later. You know, he tweeted something to the effect of, it'll be fun, they said. Shaq Quarterman doesn't hit that hard, they said, you know. <laughs> but he he destroyed this kid. I mean, it was it was fantastical. So I'll go look that up. It was it, When you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like, you'll, you'll be like, oh, if you watch the huddle highlights, I don't know what play he's talking about. Boom. Oh, that's the play. And that's the kind of, of the, the physicality that this kid can have on the field. Here, I'm rubbing my legs. You can't see it down the screen because I got goosebumps just talking about Shaq Quarterman. I hit like I, yeah, that's that guy. All right, we'll be looking out for him. I, I will check out that video for sure. Uh, anybody else in this mix? I know before we came on, you mentioned Darian Owens. Uh, Owens uh, injury riddle last year, but uh, coming on strong as a junior, he's going to play an integral role. Michael Pinkney as well. Yeah, that's uh that's at the weak side linebacker position. Um, so Owens got hurt uh, early in the season, uh, tore up his knee, and then missed the rest of the year. Uh, then Michael Pinckney came in as an early enrollee uh, in the spring. Also, uh, all three linebackers that we signed last class: uh, Quarterman, who I just talked about, Pinckney, who I'm getting ready to talk about now, and Zach Cor uh, Zach McLeod. Excuse me, were all early enrollees, so they were on campus in January, um, and they'll all play varying roles. Uh, like I said, I think Quarterman's going to start. Uh, Pinckney is another kid who has a, a great chance to start um, over Owens on the outside. Um, and it's, you know, obviously you would like to see Owens have a chance to get his job back per se, but we have a new coaching staff, like completely. We have a new scheme completely. Uh, so what was once his may not be any longer. Uh, Pinckney plays fast. He plays mean. Uh, he started throughout the spring. Uh, he and Quarterman, two freshmen, started next to each other uh, at the middle and, and weak side linebacker positions. Uh, Pinkney's mean. He plays with a mean streak to him. Uh, he's smart. He's quick. Uh, he was the lowest rated of the three linebacker recruits, um, but could potentially end up being the best. And I know 
that you're, you know, watching this video talking about, wait, Cam, you just gave the whole spiel about, you know, like, yeah, I think that, but it, I mean, it's like, it's perfectly tailored to his skill set. You know, if you're like, it's one of those things where, you know, in recruiting, it's, there's, you know, the, the depth chart, so the ability to get on the field, but then there's also the scheme fit. And if you're a spread, if you're a spread quarterback, say if you're a, you know, Johnny Manziel per se, um, eh, let's not use that example. Um, Robert Griffin, I know, not another great example, but whatever. If you're a spread quarterback and you want to go to LSU where they're not going to run any spread stuff ever, that's a scheme fit. That's a mismatch. You're not going to be successful there because they don't have the scheme to match your skill set. Talking about Pinckney and the Miami defense that my, uh, Manny Diaz is installing, it's a perfect fit. I mean, it's like a tailored suit. You just put it on, boom. I mean, it's, you know, and for him and Quarterman, both, you know, Quarterman was talking about he came on campus and there was no nomenclature change from his high school defense to the collegiate defense. I mean, obviously, some of the schemes would be more advanced, but the way that they're talking about them is the exact same. So that takes down the learning curve, all, you know, just immediately because you don't have to learn how to rename, you know, if you're looking at the one, two, three receivers, we're not going to call it Alpha Bravo Charlie. We're not going to do anything to call it differently. We're using the same terminology that you used in high school. So now all you need to do is learn how to apply that terminology. There's no barrier of entry where I need to learn what this means before I can learn to apply it. I already know what this means, but how are we using this knowledge? So Pinckney uh, and Quarterman, uh, they're going to be really good. Uh, behind them, Owens and Young both got hurt last year. Um, but I think that, you know, at the linebacker position, we've obviously seen Miami have injuries because we talked about those, those two guys getting injured last year. So you need depth. Uh, you can't have them out there all the time. Um, playing every single play, uh, any linebackers. I mean, it's just, I mean, you just get fatigued playing, you know, collegiate football, especially at this level. So I think those guys are going to really, um, you know, they're all going to play big roles. Right now I do have the two freshmen, Quarterman and Pinkney, ahead of the returners and uh, Young and Owens, but we'll see. Uh, the last guy I guess I want to talk about is uh, Jermaine Grace at the strong side backer uh, now in this scheme. Uh, you know, he's slight of build. Uh He's a true senior, so he's played for four years, uh, was a second leading tackler for a couple of years, uh, and then was the leading tackler last year. Um, and he can do it all. He's like, I mean, he can he can blitz. Uh, and when I was talking about the fact that the scheme was really going to fit people's skill sets, um, Jermaine Grace is is good. At his, his instincts are some of the best I've ever seen. Uh, and full disclosure, uh, he went to the high school where I work. So I got a chance to see him for multiple years as a high school kid, cover those games and everything. Uh, you know, but that's backed up by writing from multiple people, uh, recruiting analysts, local journalists, myself. His instincts are elite. Um, so he, he's very, very good at diagnosing the play. He knows the game of football very well. He's a fast player. He's one of the fastest players on this team at the linebacker position. He runs a legit 4, 5, 40 range, maybe even a little bit under that. Um, he can blitz. Uh, he's really good at blitzing, and he's also really, really good in pass coverage. Uh, and he's developed, as he's gotten a little bit physically bigger, uh, the ability to really use those instincts to affect the run game. Because when he was younger, uh, like as a freshman, he saw it. He said, okay, cool, I read this run play, I know I need to go here, but when he's 190 pounds as a, high, as a college freshman, you know, that, that linebacker or that offensive lineman or fullback just say, whoop, get out of the way. And so he was there to make the play, but couldn't always physically make that happen or manifest that into a tackle. Now he has a little bit better ability to do that. He's up around 212, uh, yeah, 208 to 212, somewhere in that range uh, is what he said uh, he's weighing right now. So a little bit more physicality. Uh, and he's really the guy, when I talk about the jack of all trades, he can do it all. Uh, he's not necessarily going to make a guy go flying eight yards backwards like a, a, a Denzel Perryman or a Shaq Quarterman, uh, but he is forceful at the point of attack uh, in the run game. He can blitz, he can cover. Uh, we can use him in a lot of different places uh, on the defense. So he's the guy who, if I'm really looking at this defense, I want to see number five out there at linebacker for, you know, 90, 95% of the plays. Um, if he's, you know, physically in shape to do that, uh, just because you can put him in so many different places, you can do so many different things with him. Uh, and then that frees up 
the other guys in the front seven. You know, if you want to play some stunt games, some little zone ball games where you blitz him and, and drop the deep tackle into the flat area to try to cover that curl router, you know, things like that. Uh, but he's really the superstar of this defense uh, right now. Like, uh, you know, I said in the previous video about the defensive line, there's a lot of talent up there also. Uh, but Jermaine Grace is, is an elitely talented player, uh, one of the best linebackers in the country in the ACC for, for sure. Um, but, yeah, he's really going to be the guy uh, that I'm really looking on to lead this group by example uh, throughout the year, especially if we're going to play two freshmen next to him like we did in the spring. Um, behind him is Zach McLeod, the other uh, freshman enrollee. Uh, he was a four-star recruit, so he's the second-highest-ranked recruit uh, of those three. It was Quarterman number one, McLeod number two, and Pinkney number three ba uh, based on ratings. Uh, so McLeod, he's a big kid. Uh, he's 6'4", 220-ish. Uh, he went to Santa Lucia's High School, which is the same high school that gave us Vince Wilfork down to the U. Uh, so that's in Palm Beach County. So a local kid, um, you know, and uh, he, he plays. He's not necessarily as polished as Pinckney or uh, Quarterman are right now. He has a, a he can be a very, very good player here. I'm expecting, you know, eventually, you know, second, maybe first team all ACC from him years down the road. Um, but, I mean, he has a wealth of talent, uh, and him playing behind Jermaine Grace is only going to help him get better uh, because even, you know, in, in the professional ranks, when you bring in a new guy, if you, like, say you're the say you're the Eagles and you draft Carson Wentz, you already have a quarterback there. So that quarterback is a professional. I'm not going to really go out of my way to try to train up Carson Wentz because I'm training this guy to take my job. In college, especially if you have a senior, you want to train them to take your job because you're going to get a job in the league and then it leaves your program, your alma mater program, better in your absence as you go forward. So there's less of that conflict per se. Um, now, obviously, with you know, players who are still competing there uh, for the same position, you might not have that same camaraderie, but even though you want your team to be a family, but yeah, uh, McLeod playing behind Grace, even if they're not the closest of friends, he should be second in that position group every time that they're taking reps. So he watches Jermaine Grace do it, and then he does it the same way. Um, so I don't know that he's going to uh, – Zach McLeod, that is, is going to be a big, big player for us this year. Uh, but in years to come, he's going to be very, very good. Cam, we've been Cam, talking we've been Miami talking football, football for like uh, uh, two and a half or three years. years. We've, done we've done this 25 done this times, something like that. So uh, I think I'm fair to say that you're an optimistic fan slash writer analyst, but not unrealistic in your expectations. So not crazy optimistic, but optimistic. Look at the bright side typically. Now, I get the information from the words you speak. I get your energy level and excitement from – the, the, the way you're animated. Now, uh, that's probably most notable along the offensive line front has been the, the videos that we've done that you've had the lowest energy because you've had oh. some issues there. Now, oh. you are excited about these linebackers. Am I getting that? I'm very excited about the linebackers. Uh, I think that, again, you have, you have talent and, and scheme uh, coming together in what should be a, a great marriage. Um, you know, and all those guys that I mentioned are, you know, high three-star or four-star or above kids. Young, Owens, Grace, Pinckney, McLeod, Quarterman, the top six there, you know, and then you have other guys, you know, behind them, like a Michael Smith from Miami Northwestern Senior High School, uh, you know, actually, as I click over so I can make sure that I don't forget anybody, a uh, Charles Perry, uh, who's from Royal Palm Beach, he was a four-star kid who could, you know, be an impact player at the outside linebacker position, uh, and he was with the second team uh, throughout the spring because uh, Young, uh, sorry, Owens was out. So that's another four-star guy. So, I mean, that's like seven, eight guys that I mentioned who have a high quality of talent. So I'm very excited uh, for them. I'm looking forward to big things from them. And, you know, I, I'm i an alum of the University of Miami. Like, I have my, uh, you know, my degree from there. Like, I bleed orange and green. Well, today, black and orange and chrome. But, you know, you get the picture. This is my school. Um, and, like, I am blessed to have the opportunity to, to blog about them and everything, but I try to be pragmatic, you know. I, I try to be realistic with the situation. You know, obviously last year we're talking about, you know, the Al Golden regime and everything, and, you know, I wrote a pretty pointed piece afterwards uh, after the Clemson game saying he needed to be fired. I wrote that piece that night, um, and I didn't think it was going to happen, but, I mean, I wrote a piece after the Florida State game that said, I think that for this regime, this is as good as it gets. And what I meant was having or a close loss to Florida State 
having the ball with a chance to go down and make a dramatic win, but losing by three or four, that was the ceiling for the regime that once was. So would I like it to be better? Sure. But like, I mean, you have to be realistic at some point. So I really do try to be pragmatic about it. But I mean, like, yeah, this is my team. This is my school. Like I went there, I, you know, blood, sweat and tears, you know, formative moments uh, on campus in Coral Gables. Like, of course I want them to be great. Like, cheer for them like I make no bones about that like if it comes to my I'm gonna choose them and I'm gonna root for them but I mean you do still kind of have to be realistic uh with what the situation is but uh I am optimistic especially we have a new staff we have a new scheme we have players whose talents are going to be used hopefully to great success uh so yeah I, I'm excited for Hurricanes football again I'm excited to see what Mark Rick and the staff can do uh and especially on this defensive side like I spoke about uh with defensive line and a linebacker I think that there's talent enough where we can be really successful even starting this year. Cam Underwood, State of the U, always with a sterling personal breakdown, this time the linebackers at Miami for 2016. Thanks a lot, Cam. No problem. See you later, guys.